I appreciate y'all joining us today. Um, welcome to our dual credit partner librarians. And for those of you who couldn't be here, I'm going to be sending you this information via this link. So um, our important uh, information that we want to share with you all is because all of our dual credit students are just like any of our regular West Kentucky students, we want to make sure that our librarians, who are the important sources that your students will be coming to for research needs, we want to make sure you all know what we have to offer at the library. So I know you mentioned you hadn't been um, on our website and, and to the library to see what we have to offer, so I certainly welcome you afterwards. I can certainly take you on a tour if you'd like. Same with you, Rhonda. Rhonda's been here before, so I'm happy to show you all, but anybody can reach out to me anytime. Any time you have a question, I've been, I've talked to many of you all uh, when a student's standing right there with them. So sometimes the logins are the problem. Now that part is a difficult thing um, because I can't help with that immediately. So Ruby Rogers is our Director of Information Technology and she is the person to reach out to if you yourself have a login information or if a student has a login problem and cannot get to that. That was what we used to have the most trouble with um, and our high school end is the students not remembering their logins. Um, now the links are not expiring, or the passwords are not expiring. I think that they are a lifetime now, or for a long period of time. I can't remember how long, but it's much longer, and it's not every 90 days, which is what it used to be. So we hope that that has improved. So um, just let me know. I can, well, Ruby Rogers, I know her number is 270-534-3184. And her email is ruby, R-U-B-Y dot Rogers, R-O-D-G-E-R-S at K-C-T-C-S dot E-D-U. So she would be the one to reach out for that. Rhonda, your credentials work. You've logged in, right? Everything's fine. Okay, good. So for those of you who do not have credentials yet working, Ruby is also the person who will get that going with the systems office. And you can contact me and I can get you to Ruby or you can contact her directly. She will reach out to you as soon as yours is active, but it is in process, so. Okay, so one of the most important things I like to remind the students, and I'm, I'm going to give you an overview of what we have here on campus so that you can tell your students that and encourage them to come visit, especially local. I know you're further away, but for local students, um, if there's times that you can come with your class, it would be good to let me know that you're planning on bringing a group. We can try to accommodate that as much as possible uh, for tours or something like that. We're, we're certainly welcome. We want them to come anytime. But after classes and after school's out, they can certainly come over. We're open till 5.30, um, Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, we're just open till 4. We are not open on the weekends, but of course, the main thing we want everyone to know is they can use the library even when the physical building is not open. So we want them to utilize that. Uh, it's very simple to get to the library website if you haven't already gotten there. From the main website, westkentucky.kctcs.edu, you click, your students will click current students, which is at the top of the page, and then they'll click library, they'll scroll down. Faculty and staff also have a tab for that as well. Um, so they might click faculty and staff and then library. So your instructors might be accessing it from the faculty side. But either way, it's two clicks and it's very easy to get to that. The students to check out materials, they have a student ID. This is what it looks like. I just wanted you all to know that. If they have a question, that's their library card to check out materials here. We can get them to the business office at Anderson Technical Building to get those made if they don't have one. But they can bring a driver's license if they have one um, or another form of photo ID to check out materials and get a library card. So physically, we have over 20,000 books in the library that's in our stacks, in our reference section, all physical titles. Ebooks, we have over 130,000, so that's our ratio, but they certainly have access to many, many books. Uh, we have DVDs. We have um, research databases, 92 at this point. Those are online research databases for finding articles and journals. We have a streaming video collection called Films on Demand which has over 30,000 titles in it, ranging from every subject area you can imagine, from the technical studies to general education, all of that. Um, huge menu, we're gonna look at that in a second. We have audiobooks on CD that they can check out and listen to. And to search all of that, we have what's called our Primo Search. And I'm gonna show you all of this, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview first of what we have. Our Primo Search searches all of our physical and our online resources all in one search. So all of those videos online, databases, everything in one search, and then you can limit further from there. 
So for other services that we have, we have interlibrary loan, and that is a service you can borrow, of course, as you know, from other libraries. For our students, they have access to the whole state of Kentucky. So first, we reach out to our KCTCS libraries. We're one of 16 colleges, so that's kind of the quickest way to get something from another library. It's a book or an article if they're looking for either of those items. We go first there, and then any of the state libraries, Moorhead, Murray State, Eastern, Western, all of that, plus the public libraries we can have access to. So if they can't find it here, we can get it for them 99.99% .99 of the time. Chances are we, we can get it. They can uh, check out and use certain technology in the library. So all of this is on our website, but I want to make sure that you stress to them what we have here. We have 32 computers total. So this is part of them. The rest are over in our research room. We have wireless printing and regular printing, um, black and white. We don't have color printing, but all of our students have 400 free copies a semester, so they can print that as well. That's all of our students. Um, so the, the computers are first come, first serve, and we do teach classes in the lab um, often, but not all the time. So when it's available, they can come first come, first serve. We have free coffee on Mondays and Tuesdays, which probably they won't be able to come at that time. Uh, we do have free events, and sometimes our dual credit partners would like to bring students to those. So our library events page lists all of those for the semester. We have the fall outlined right now, and we're planning for spring. So soon the spring events will be up as well. If you all are interested in that, just let me know. We can certainly reserve you spots to attend those events. So in the library catalog and in Primo, there are certain areas or locations that we want to make sure you all know about that they will be seeing on the side of Primo and the library catalog, which is our discovery search now. Um, these are the locations that we have. So the book stacks are the main shelves. That's the main big sections. Um, our areas here in the library, they're broken down A through N, and P's are over there. That's the biggest section. And then across the library is Q through Z. We also have a popular fiction section and nonfiction. Those are like New York Times bestselling authors, people who like to read, you know, not just dedicated to the curriculum. That's, we have that in our popular materials. We have a children's collection, and our, many of our students do have children, uh, but our early childhood education program also uses the children's section. We have young adult collection, which they love. Uh, DVDs, they love those. Um, they're academic in nature plus popular um, Academy Award winners, Disney, we have all sorts of DVDs. Our program materials, that's important uh, for our AMP, anatomy and physiology students especially. Uh, we have models that they can check out. Um, that's been an addition this past year for students taking those exams. They study very often with the parts of the body, the muscles, all of that is here, but it's to use in the library. Our allied health and nursing programs have a lot in those sections. They have videos that you can use here. They don't want to leave the library and then flashcards for studying for certain exams. So that's in our program material section. Of course, audio CDs I mentioned. Our reference section is to use in the library. And then our college archives and special collection is dedicated to, of course, our institution, West Kentucky, our yearbooks and photographs and all sorts of memorabilia. We have an archivist that joined us last year, which is really exciting. But it's also um, Paducah history, local history, Kentucky history is in that section. Our reserves is an area at the desk. If an instructor wants to put something on reserve, they might have that, and you all probably are familiar with that. They just have to come and ask for whatever that item is for that course and that instructor. Checkout periods. Um, this is all on our website, but books are the longest, of course, 21 days, and audiobooks are the same way. Our DVDs are five days, um, unless they're in the program materials section, which they have to be used in the library. And reserves is usually ranges from three to five hours in the library, and sometimes it's a week or two week checkout period. Reference is used in the library. We do have calculators for our math students. They like to check those out. They can be for three days. That's also for a headset with a recording device and a webcam. We have Kindles for two week checkout, and we have chargers, which our students do like because um, they often forget their chargers, and we have power up stations that they can charge up while they're here. So I mentioned our website being very easy to get to. Um, again, westkentucky.kctcs.edu. Click current students or faculty and staff and then scroll to library. One of the main menu items that we're going to focus on today too are our library guides. That is one of the main menu items on the website. Um, these are starting points for research in certain fields or areas. So we have 
um, from A to Z. I think we have 44 maybe now, and we create the, or 42, sorry. We create these all the time. I'm working on two right now. Um, just had an instructor for American government, for example, asked me to make one specifically for her class and for research topics that they were getting ready to do. So um, we create these all the time. We update these all the time. Our librarians here just update those regularly. And they are starting points for students. So, and that's where we're going to really want you to direct those students when they come asking questions. Because we have everything from welding and all the applied technologies to culinary arts, chemistry, um, biology, math, uh, all sorts of them. So we're going to go over those in just a minute. So I mentioned Primo. I'm going to go ahead and go to our website too. Primo searches everything, remember, all at once. So it's first thing that you see when you go to the library page, but it's also on all of our library guides to keep students back to where you need to be for Primo. But it is on the main page. So I'm just going to um, search on nursing, for example. I click nursing and hit go. Remember it's searching everything. So you will see thousands and thousands and sometimes millions of results. But that's because everything is in there. Journal articles, streaming videos, um, books, videos, DVDs, audio books, everything all in one search. But then of course your limiters are all here on the right. There's also a quick way, which our um, faculty here were very excited about because the library catalog in their sense, you know, was gone. And we could, before we went to Primo, um, which has been a couple of years now, but there was a way to just search our library with a real quick search in the library catalog. And it still said library catalog and they were holding on to that library catalog. Well, they added back in a feature last year or last semester um, from the main menu, if you click there you'll see a link to library catalog. And you just hit the magnifying glass again, and it will pull up just items in the library. Now that is videos, books, and audiobooks, but you see that it limited down to 348 versus all what we have to, had to begin with. Um, but that is a, something that the faculty have really liked that has come back. That's a really quick way to, but I'm gonna go back to our main. Um, search that we just did. So over to the right, you will see you can limit by resource type, which you could do articles, journals, uh, reviews, books, websites, all of that. You can also limit by library. And in this case, remember we're one of 16 colleges, so all of the colleges are listed from A to Z, Ashland down to West Kentucky. We're at the bottom because we're West Kentucky. So if they want something specifically in our library, they have to do that there. Now that will include ebooks and streaming videos and things like that in our collection. So that library catalog was really just those physical items here, whereas the library part will have um, the online as well. So that's just a reminder of our main way that you search. There is a tutorial for right underneath the search box on Primo, and it shows you how you can limit and all of that, and it's not, not long, it's about five or six minutes, but students referring them to that would be really helpful, I think, to show them how to do that. So I mentioned our library guides. That's really where I wanna to focus today, too. <clears throat> our library guides is a main menu item on the left. We have 44 of those, and they start with Applied Technologies, they have communications, criminal justice, diagnostic medical sonography, homeland security, philosophy, all the way down to welding. So everything in between. Um, but again, we make these all the time. They change all the time. So I encourage you to keep looking uh, anytime you're on there because chances are we're adding something within that week. Um, <clears throat> so for example, today I met with a class that was American government. We just did, so some are course specific and some are program specific and entire um, program areas and disciplines. Um, so many of our dual credits, of course, take English. So that's one that you'll wanna check out. Um, there's all sorts, of, let's see, we have computers and digital literacy. They do that one a lot. I'm just gonna choose that one, computer and digital literacy. So on the main homepage of all of our library guides, we have our hours as a quick reference, tabs to our location, our staff, our website. There's a picture of me because this is the one, one of the ones I'm in charge of and then whatever librarian is in charge of that one, keeping that updated is on that page and how to contact them. 
Um, we have this general tour of the library that is a really good thing. It's also on our main website to show our students. So I'm going to play that real quick so you guys can see that. It's something really easy to show them as an overview. Welcome to Matheson Library. My name is Amy Sullivan and I'm the Director of Library Services. The library is one of the most important resources you can use while you're here on campus at West Kentucky. We're located on the second floor of the Matheson Learning Resource Center or the MLRC building. The whole second floor is the library. When you're at the library, you could use many of our resources, including, of course, our books. We have about 20,000 books, physical books at the library, that are related to the curriculum and the programs that you will take while you're here on campus. But we also have a popular fiction section, which includes many authors that are New York Times bestsellers and books for entertainment if you do like to read. We have books on audio CD if you like to listen to books. And we also have DVDs that you can watch that our students really do like. We also have 32 computers located in the library that are available first come first serve if we aren't teaching a library class in one of our labs. If you're taking an FYE 105 or an English 101 or English 102 class, you will probably visit the library and visit one of our computer labs. But if the class is not being held in the lab, you're welcome to use our computers. We have wireless printing if you have a laptop that you would like to bring and awesome Wi-Fi connections. If you go to our website, westkentucky.kctcs.edu, it's very simple to get to the library website. It's two clicks, current students at the top of the page, then library if you scroll down just a bit and you'll see a picture of our building. Our library guides tab of the website features an alphabetical list from A to Z of all of our programs on campus and a starting point for your research. We recommend certain books, certain databases, journals, and articles in those areas. Everything from art and design to culinary arts, chemistry, biology, all the way down to welding. Start there to begin your research. Another important tab of the library website is our Contact Us page. If you have a question, use our Contact Us tab to find our phone numbers where you can call us and we can walk you through your research online, or you can email us and we will answer that as quickly as possible, or choose our Ask a Librarian tab to send an automatic question and we will return that question as soon as possible. Besides studying and using our resources at the library, you might also want to attend one of our events that we have. We have events either on Mondays or Wednesdays, usually at 11 o'clock when classes are not going on. We often have refreshments and our students really enjoy that. On Mondays and Tuesdays, we have free coffee from 8 a.m. until noon, and our students really like to have that to kick off their week. We even have a stress-free zone with chess sets where you can play a game of chess with one of your friends, coloring where you can just de-stress, doing some coloring, even a jigsaw puzzle that you could work. So that was a quick tour of the library. Don't forget, if you have questions, just click on Current Students, then Library to find out anything else you need to know. So that's just a quick nice way to overview it for students if you want to refer them to that. That's on all of our library guides on the main page. But I'm going to go through quickly each tab on this one. All of our library guides generally have these basic tabs. Some of them are more detailed than others depending on if the instructor has requested something specific to be added on there or we've just found some different reasons that they need to have some more. But generally they have recommended books. They recommend certain um, resources in certain formats. So we definitely have a Find Books tab, articles, ebooks, audiovisual materials, recommended links, the faculty contact for that program at West Kentucky, and then a more help or an Ask a Librarian to be able to get to us if they have additional questions. So this one um, also has a West Kentucky College Academy link because computer and digital literacy is something that our dual credit students are often taking. So this links them directly to the West Kentucky College Academy page, which further um, hooks them up with our dual credit program and instructors. So I'm going to start with Find Books. And again, the Primo box, which is our search engine, is all, always on the Find Books page. Information about interlibrary loan is here. Library of Congress, which is how we're set up and classified and uh, all the disciplines and how that works and all the areas that we mentioned. And then we feature certain books in that area that are new. Uh, we change these out as new materials arrive and they're all linked directly in Primo here. So these are just some recommended books for computers right now. And then the next tab is find articles. EBSCOhost is one of our most popular um, databases to search in, so that is the general database tutorial that we have featured here, so students can watch that to learn how to search in a, in a database. 
I always stress to them, of course, that they operate the same, but our databases look different, but the operations are the same. So I show them the citation features often and um, full text articles and all of that. So you all know all of that. But um, EBSCOhost is one of the most popular, and we pull out certain databases in those fields on each library guide, like this one. We have the Computer Science Database, Learning Express Library. These are four that we really recommend they start in because we have 90 databases and they won't know where to begin. So we refer them to these library guides to have a starting point. There's a description of what's in those and each one is linked if you click on the blue title of that. And then we have some periodicals that we recommend in computers here and those link directly online to them as well. Our audiovisual materials tab is Features are films on demand collection, which I mentioned earlier, our streaming video collection. And we have pulled out some specific videos in this area, and there's a summary uh, with each of those. I'm just going to click on one so you kind of see that interface real quick. Our students can use these. They're academic videos. I always stress to them that that is, they are not popular movies. They are academic videos. Although it looks like YouTube and Netflix, you know, they're familiar with that. So they do like that. And our instructors use those as well in the classroom. They assign those uh, in Blackboard. Online courses use them. They do sometimes have an outside assignment. They have to watch a video before they come to class. So it's used often. There's always a description underneath. Um, there is a citation feature as well. All of our databases, including Films on Demand, you just look for that site feature and they just have to remember to select their specific manual and know which um, manual style they need for their course. MLA and APA, of course, are almost always the ones that they need. They just have to remember to click on that and it will cite in that and they can just copy and paste that into their papers directly. All of our Films on Demand videos have a segment section where you can just watch a segment of a video. They might assign a certain um, section. They have a transcript as well. Um, if I click on transcript, you can watch all of that. They are all ADA compliant, so they have closed captioning. Um, they're great resources. So that's on our audiovisual tab. There's also a link here to tips on using that for embedding in Blackboard and that type of thing and using Films on Demand, making a playlist. They can save videos in their uh, accounts if they set up an account. Students and teachers can do that. Um, and then Learning Express Library is a wonderful resource offered through KYVL, the Kentucky Virtual Library. It has a whole computer skills center. It also has lots of um, test preparation for all sorts of careers that students want to go into. Learning Express Library is fantastic. We feature this on different library guides depending on um, which area they're wanting to practice in. Like they have ebooks and practice tutorials and tests. Um, the dental program has a test in there. There's GED prep, ACT prep. There's all sorts of things in Learning Express Library. Our ebook tab of the library guides features ProQuest and EBSCOhost ebook collections that we own. Um, we have featured titles here. If I just click on any, all of these have featured titles on their rotating carousels on each library guide, but I just clicked one of them, and this takes me to the interface for ebook central. Uh, you can download ebooks. I'm just going to click on this title to show you what that looks like. You can download it, read online. Um, in order to be able to go back to it and download those titles, you do have to set up an account so students would have to create their own and remember that. So they'd have to make sure and write down their credentials and hopefully they wouldn't forget that. They can jump to, um, go to the table of contents and jump to a certain chapter and read it online. Um, there's always a description, citation feature as well. If I say cite, it will have um, APA or MLA, wherever they want to go. So that's our ebook collection. It's very easy to use. And there is a tutorial here to show them as well. Our recommended links tab are always some reputable sources that we want to direct students to in their areas so that they um, have some additional resources besides just the library support, things online for this one for digital literacy, we have PC World and just some of those. I always talk to students about the .gov, .edu versus .com websites and all of that. We also have tutorials on popular versus peer reviewed and what the difference in those items are. Um, and then our faculty contacts tab again connects you with the faculty in that program. And that was College Academy and this is just simply a ask a librarian link to if they have more questions. 
So that was just one that I pulled out as an example. Um, let's see, I'm going to go back to our main um, website here. So we did Primo, let's see. Okay, so find resources. That is another tab on the website if you want to search in a specific database, and sometimes our students do have assignments that say you need to search in a specific database for an article. ProQuest, EBSCOhost, Gale, those are three big ones that our students often get assignments to look in. I know English 101 also they require ProQuest or EBSCOhost for their articles for their exit tutorials, for example. So um, if you go to Find Resources tab on the main menu of the website, you will see, it, it, again, it looks similar to our other um, library guides, but this has a lot of great information as far as um, our periodicals listing. So we have print periodicals here in the library, not as many as we used to because there's thousands online, as you all know, but that's here. Um, we're getting ready to put an entire list of DVDs available because that's an often requested thing. What DVDs do you have all in one place? So we're going to have an alphabetical listing of those. And then we have our Kindles and all the titles that are available on our Kindles. But in the middle of the page, you will see a databases A to Z section, and that is where you can select a specific database. So if I click on that, you will see all of these databases. And students might have to go to a specific one, such as ProQuest. So I'll just pull up ProQuest General, because there are several ProQuest, and you just hit Go. Oh, before I do that, right underneath the databases A to Z, there's also a View More Results link. And this lists all of the databases and descriptions of what those are. So if you're ever interested and want to see what all those are, and if we have new ones, um, our newest ones are listed over here. Let's see. I have a lot of tabs open here. Let me close these out. Okay. So I selected ProQuest, and I'm going to hit Go. <clears throat> And ProQuest has several sub-databases within it. And you can use all of what's selected, or you can just choose your databases that you'd like. But I just selected them all. And this is ProQuest. This is just what the interface looks like for this one. Um, all of our databases, of course, you can search by publication. You can search by date and narrow your results that way. Um, always full text and peer-reviewed, of course, we tell our students. And Sometimes it's real easy to find right there underneath the search box, and sometimes it's over to the right or on the left or under, you know, you scroll down a little bit, but you're always looking for full text and peer-reviewed, and so I make sure to show them that they need to check that because, of course, they need those scholarly sources. Um, let's see. Um, let's just do computers for fun. And that's too general, of course. I need to make sure we tell them, of course, adding keywords and all of that. But I just wanted to show you the interface once you go in. Um, any of the little graduation caps are scholarly sources, of course. You can, over here on the left, you can search by publication date, uh, time periods here. You can search by format, scholarly, magazines, trade journals. Of course, the full text and peer reviewed, you always want to add. Um, you can even do publication title from here, or you could do it from the main page. Um, you can limit there. So um, just saying I picked this first one. Again, they can read it on screen. And then over to the right, there's always a citation feature for all of the databases, and they don't understand how lucky they are <laughs> because they don't have to know their style manuals. But um, you can just click that site feature again, and there's all your choices cut and paste into their documents. So um, that is, I wanted to make sure to show you where to go for searching a specific database. Um, does anyone have questions for me at this point? OK, I should have already asked for questions. Main thing I want everyone to know is that we are here to help you and your students. So we want them to contact us. We want you to contact us. And again, I try to help as best as possible if you have a student standing right there. Sometimes we might have to say, I'll get back with you, depending on what it is. But most of the time, we can help. If y'all need to call us from school, that is absolutely fine. Um, we do want them to come here, too, if they at all can. And we'd love to have them. So that's pretty much what I have wanted to cover today. Do you all? 
have anything you want to do while you're here. You certainly, I want to give you all time to search while you're here. Um, make sure I covered everything. Yeah, I think so. So this is my contact information. I want to make sure too that all of you all take back a poster if you don't mind hanging in your library so the students will quickly know what, they ha what we have and how to get to our website, um, our contact information, phone number, and then there's brochures you can distribute to your students. We have plenty if you guys would like to take a stack, bookmarks that has all of our information on it. And then my business cards are here too, so. Y'all don't have any questions for me. You're so quiet. Um, the, the main thing I wanted to make sure you all knew was our, I didn't know if you had seen our new website and our new navigation with that. Primo has been upgraded uh, in the past year, so if you were using it last year, it's a little different. The interface is now called Primo VE, but um, we did get a new integrated library system as well this past year, so we're still learning that, and it's um, still new to us. It came over in December, actually, but it's, it's compatible very well with Primo, and so far it's been working really well. Um, but if, we, if you ever have any problems, certainly call that to our attention. We monitor that pretty often if there's database problems or things like that. But um, and if there's downtime with databases that students are using, it's very, very rare, and they always schedule that like in the wee hours of the morning or things like that. So we've been very fortunate. We don't have a lot of downtime with databases keeping up with that. The biggest problem we sometimes have is um, interfaces changing, and we didn't know it. We didn't get an announcement. We're teaching a class, and all of a sudden, it's a whole new um, navigation so that changes often and we don't always get that out to everybody so I'm hoping that everybody utilizes it enough to kind of keep up with with all of that but um, what else I'm just trying to think do you all have anything you're certainly welcome to stay I'm here I'm gonna stay too um, if you want to search and do some things while you're here take some information or tour the library I'll show you around I'm glad to do that um, another thing uh, I forgot, our dual credit students also have access to tutoring. I'm not over the tutoring center, but it's located in the library. So they absolutely can take advantage of free tutoring. There is an online tutoring available as well. I'm not sure how all that works, but um, our tutoring center, you can reach that number is 270-534-3197. Uh, tutoring is located in the library, so their, their hours are the same as what the library hours are. I say that virtually they are. Sometimes they open at 8 o'clock versus 7.30, but their hours are also posted on the website. So that's another thing students need to be aware of. And they tutor in most subjects from math and writing, and they also work with time management, study skills, and that type of thing as well. So you don't have to just be struggling to take advantage of tutoring. <clears throat> All right, well, any questions, please feel free to contact me. Again, my name is Amy Sullivan. My number is 270-534-3171. Thank you very much.